This is section 3.2, the definite integral. In this video, we're going to go through example 71 in your book, and this is a type of problem that has an absolute value in it. Okay, so 71 gives us this function. It's interested in the integral from 0 to 6 of the absolute value of 3 minus x. Okay, so I would like to just go ahead and take the integral of this function, but I have a problem here. I have an absolute value sign, and I don't have any rules for how to take the integral of an absolute value. So I'm going to look at this problem the same way I look at all my problems, and I'm just going to pretend it's not even there. <laughs> so I just got rid of my absolute value signs. But unlike in real life where maybe ignoring problems works, here in calculus, that will eventually catch up to you. You need to take care of this problem. So I erased my absolute value signs, but now I have an entirely new function. My original function, the absolute value of 3 minus x, looks something like this. The function I've written here, though, 3 minus x, looks something like this. And these are different functions. If originally I was interested in this integral, I'm interested in the area here, and here I have two positive values. But if this new function, if I find the integral of this function, I have a positive area here, but here my area is negative. So I'll end up getting a different value for my integral than, of, than what I should get of my original function. So I'll need to take care of this. What I'm going to do is figure out what this point is. Where does this new function become negative? I'm going to take that part and just make it positive. So what I'm going to do, figure out where this function equals 0, split up the integral into this section and this section, and then just make sure that both of these areas have positive values. Because I know in my original function, the absolute value of 3 minus x, they should both be positive. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I take my function, set it equal to 0, solve for x, and I get that x equals 3. All right, and this is the point where I'm going to split my integral. So now I'm going to split my integral. So I have it from 0 to 3 of 3 minus x dx plus the integral from 3 to 6 of 3 minus x dx. Okay, and remember, I want both of these areas to be positive. If I didn't have a graph here, I want to know which of these was the part under the graph uh, or under the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is just take the absolute value of both of these sections. So now when I find the area or find the integral of these parts, it'll be positive no matter what. Okay, so now I can just take the integral like normal. So the integral of 3 minus x becomes 3x minus 1 half x squared from 0 to 3, plus, same thing over here, 3x minus 1 half x squared from 3 to 6. And remember, I still have my absolute values over both of these parts. Over here, I plug in my 3 first. I get 3 times 3 minus 1 half times 3 squared. Now minus all of this, minus everything I get when I plug in 0, which just becomes 0 minus 0. Remember, absolute values over all of this. Plus, same thing here. Plug in my 6. I'm going to go ahead and solve some of this out. 3 times 6 gives me 18 minus 1 half times 6 squared will also give me 18. Uh, minus whatever I get when I plug in 3. And when I plug in 3, I get 9 minus 1 half times 9, or 9 over 2. Okay, and absolute value of all of this, too. And now you just go ahead, solve out your math, see what you get. So here, 3 times 3 gives me 9, minus 9 over 2. That'll become uh, 18 over 2, minus 9 over 2. I get 9 over 2, absolute value of that, minus 0, plus the absolute value of 18 minus 18 is just 0. So now I have 0 minus 9 minus 9 over 2. Remember, this value here is just equal to 9 over 2. 0 minus 9 over 2 gives me negative 9 over 2. But because I have my absolute values, this just becomes 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2, which becomes 18 over 2, which just reduces down to 9 which is what I wanted to happen, right? I knew one of these parts would become negative, would have a negative area, but because I had absolute values in both places, I ensured that both of these sections became positive area values. And I just add them together, and I got 9. So a brief recap of how to do absolute value integrals. You can just ignore the integrals, or ignore the absolute value for now. See where the function equals 0, and then split up your integral um, at that point. And remember, take the absolute value of both of these sections because you won't always have a graph there, so you won't know which part is going to give you the negative area.
So just make sure that when you're uh, solving out your interval, you have two positive areas being added together, and that'll give you your answer. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.